Have you ever been reading the Bible and been thoroughly confused? Have you ever been reading the Bible and it feels like you need a thesaurus and a dictionary to make heads or tails of what the author is trying to say? I remember being in college and I was leading an InterVarsity Christian Fellowship Bible study through the book of Romans. Each week, I'd spend hours reading the chapter for that week and studying it using commentaries and online resources. And it didn't take long for me to get lost in the deep, intricate theological arguments Paul makes in his letters to the Romans. So much of Paul's language is deeply rooted in a Jewish understanding of the law and grace. And it took me hours each week to sift through Paul's words. What really changed everything for me was the day I decided to sit down, print out the entire book of Romans on double spaced paper and read it start to finish in one sitting. I quickly realized that when I took a microscope to the verses in Romans, it was easy to get overwhelmed. But taking a step back, and looking at the book as a whole gave me a totally new perspective, especially on Romans chapter seven and eight. If you've ever read Romans chapter seven, it's easy to get turned around with all of Paul's comments on doing or not doing what he knows he should or shouldn't be doing. Ultimately, Paul writes these words in chapter seven, who will rescue me from this body that is subject to death? Thanks be to God who delivers me through Jesus Christ, our Lord. I don't know about you, but there's certainly been times in my life where I felt that same way, where I've cried out to God to rescue me from my sin, to rescue me from myself, from my brokenness and rebellion. Now the climax, the turning point, the central idea of this entire book is found at the end of chapter eight. After all of Paul's talk about God's righteousness, the law, predestination, justification through faith, we arrive at the end of chapter eight, where Paul boldly proclaims, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, not height or depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. That's the gospel. That's the good news of Jesus that no matter what you've done, no matter where you've been, no matter who you are, nothing can separate you from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord.